Is it okay for me to go back as host? Oh uh, yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. It took some time. I don't know what happened today. Okay. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. Uh you can make me co-host now. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Hello. Hello, Scott. how are you? Fine. And I've seen you before. Yeah, yeah. That's good to see you again. Yeah, well, thank you. Likewise. Hmm. What kind of what kind of pet do you have? We have a, a corgi, Pembroke, Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Okay. I okay. showed him to, to you, but he's sleeping, so i and I haven't seen him lately. So yeah, yeah. What kind of pet do you have? I have a mutt. Um, or I guess the, the, uh, right way to say it is a mixed breed, but that's um, right. that's a, a, well, you a know, rescue. That's well, this was basically a rescue too. It, it was in a really terrible, probably, probably a puppy mill. Oh yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So it, it's basically a rescue from a, a re, in, an unreputable dealer, a, you know, breeder. Yeah. So, yeah, he's purebred, but not with papers. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. He's a great guy. Yeah. What's his name? Louie. Louie. I love that. <laughs> yeah, we, we had a cat named Louie. Yeah, that's a great name for an animal. I don't know why. they. Yeah. Really... Yeah. yeah, we named him uh, after Louie. Louis. Well, actually... He was a step cat for me. Um, my wife already had him when we got married, but uh, she named him after Louis Armstrong. Yep, yep, yep. Well, he is, he's named after uh, Louis, the whatever, 15th or 14th, okay, or whatever yeah. it was, because he, that's how he came in here acting like he was the king of everything. Yeah. And yeah. he still does, so that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's Terry. Oh, well, I'll give it another minute or two to make sure everybody else gets in. So where whereabouts are you, Michelle? I'm in Denver, Colorado. Denver, okay. So we've been having snow, sleet, and then 65 degrees. Yeah. Just, you know, we have, whatever it is, it'll change. Yeah. 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 Where are you? I'm in Maryland. We're having uh, 85 degrees today, or I oh, think boy. actually close to 90. Good grief. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a little early for that for us. Yeah. It's a little humid for that or something. Uh, yeah. 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 I'm usually re uh, not ready for that until about uh, July, but uh, it's hitting early this year. Well, it's just kind of crazy. So anyway, yeah. with, with everything we have to contend with, I guess weather is the least of our worries. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Jeannie. Oops. Hi, Scott. How are you? I'm doing okay. Just, um, got back from a doctor's appointment so <laughs> getting myself situated here okay okay sounds good well i'm gonna go ahead and uh get the ball rolling there were a couple of other people signed up too but i don't know if they're uh either running late or not gonna make it but uh this is uh this is a really fun class it's just a few tips that will help you get your pet to look good on camera and, and pose for you sometimes. Uh, and uh, other times uh, just give you a good action shot or something like that. So uh, 
So it's all gonna it's all gonna be good fun. Okay, here we go. All right. So I start off with a picture of my dog Maggie, and she is sporting her get set up hat. <laughs> <laughs> she is a uh, she is a fan of get set up even though and she's also a prop for me a lot of times in my classes but a little bit more about me i am in the washington dc area i live in silver spring maryland um, and uh, in addition to serving as a get set up guide i'm a freelance writer and photographer and i dabble in all sorts of photography, but I really love nature shots. I love animal shots, and I am a huge dog lover. Uh, I uh, really enjoy the interactive learning experience uh, that Get Set Up fosters, and uh, I love the community building mission, uh, making uh, building some social connections for people. So this has been a really great experience to be here. And Get Set Up is here to help you learn some useful skills and fun skills. And we learn from each other. Ideally, we can see you on camera. That creates more of a community spirit, so social connection. So if you're comfortable with that, uh, it always uh, builds um, a little bit more of a uh, community look. We um, are recording the class. So if you, and I want to make sure the recording's on, yes. Uh, if you are uh, interested in getting a recording of this class afterward, you can email us at help at getsetup.io, and we'll be happy to send that to you. Uh, just make sure you specify the title of the class and the date so we send you the right recording. Uh, if you are joining us by live stream, welcome. The best way to participate in a class is to uh, register for one and join us, and then you can interact with the other learners during the class, as well as ask questions directly of the guide. And lastly, Get Set Up is not paid to promote any specific products. I don't believe I'm going to be mentioning any specific products today, but they, uh, when, whenever we do, it's just purely informational. So. So a <clears throat> few things we're going to talk about today are getting your pet to look at the camera. Uh, we'll talk about various composition techniques for the shot. And uh, also, and this is the fun part, I think taking advantage of opportunities for really fun and funny shots. So I'm going to break there for just a sec and see what... I'm interested in what interested everybody in the class and what kind of pictures you'd like to get of your pet. And so Michelle, you want to start or. Well, our dog is a comedian, you know, and so I'd like to be able to catch um, candid shots of the things that he does. Yeah. However, he doesn't pay attention when, you know, the candid, I, candid goes, goes out the window and I get the phone out. Yeah. And he knows. You know, so yeah, I'd be yeah. interested in the tips on how to get him to look at the camera or yeah, be more spontaneous. Okay, okay. Jeannie, how about you? You know, they never they never look where you want them to look, or they see the camera and look away. Um, you know, uh, I I have had um, my last cat was a tuxedo cat, cat so black and white, so she was always hard to get decent pictures of being so dark um, yeah. because, you know, even though she had the white stripe down her chest and some under her chin, she was mostly black. Yeah. So it would blend into the background a lot. Yeah. 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 I, the thing is, it's great when you can capture them because cats eyes sometimes can be like really incredible, mm -hmm. especially in uh, when you're up close a little bit. Yeah. When I've tried to take dogs, it's like, Dogs just don't want to cooperate. Oh, you, you're you're they're looking at me. Like, come over, I'll let me pet you. Yeah, you know, let me pet me. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, we'll talk about a few tricks. Uh, anybody else who is off camera want to share? No. Okay. All right. Well, we're a small group, 
So feel free to ask questions as I go through this, but let's go ahead and have some fun. Okay, so pets, pets, pets. We think of cats and dogs when we think of pets, but there are all kinds of pets and people love them. Some people have, have cats and it's fun to get cats sometimes in uh, real, really close-ups of cats. And, you know, we all know about cat videos now, right? Everybody loves to watch cat videos. My wife was watching them the other night and... I, uh, I, I have to chuckle when I see some of them too, but, um, but they also make for great pictures, not just videos. And then some people just like fish, beta fish. My niece mm -hmm. has a beta fish that she loves goldfish. And then there are uh, little rodents like gerbils and hamsters and with gerbils and hamsters. I have trouble telling apart guinea pigs. I think I've, got what they are but uh i'm for some reason confuse those a lot and of course parakeets and parrots and other birds oh. like that and some people like reptiles uh we actually now have a chameleon like this in in our family with one of my uh nieces has now a pet chameleon she named professor ginkgo <laughs> and he's been quite a bit of entertainment for them, especially during the pandemic. So what do we look for when we're trying to get really nice pet shots? One is really expressive faces. And you can get those on animals half the time, if not more, it's by accident. Uh, you just caught them at the right time. And I've seen some expressions on different pet faces. I caught one once of my dog who is very gentle, uh, looking up as she had a bone under her paw, like take another step and you're in trouble. <laughs> and I, I know that that was not what she was thinking. Cause I can go anywhere near and take something away from her and she won't react, but it was just hilarious. Uh, at, it's fun to show them in activity. And Michelle mentioned the candid shots. Those are uh, great to get. It's great to show your pet living their lives, having fun, not just posing. And a lot of times that may be easier than getting them to pose. Uh, and uh, it's nice to get interactions with people and other pets, as well as the pet, if you've got more than one pet, the pet and pets interacting with each other. So how do you get their attention when you do want them to look at the camera? Uh, there are a few little tricks that you can try out. Uh, there, there are real attention grabbers for cats, and that can sometimes be a ball of string or uh, anything brightly colored. They really go for some visual stimuli. So if you can somehow get that close to the camera lens and hold that up, they may really draw into that. Um, they may, what they'll probably want to do is, is grab it and play. But uh, if you can find a way to just use visual stimuli for them. For dogs, most of them are very uh, treat oriented, food, food motivated. So if you can use treats and maybe hold that up as close to the camera lens as you're snapping the picture, that will work. I've tried that and, it, and have been pretty successful. Uh, sometimes you can use a high-pitched voice or a toy, a squeaky toy or something like that that gets their attention and they'll look. Uh, just engaging with them and showing some affection uh, is, uh, is a way for them to, to take a look at you as you're getting ready to snap their picture. And also, it just takes some patience. Sometimes you just need to Accept the fact that you're not going to get this done in one in one shot. It may take a while to really get their attention, depending on what kind of shot you want to get. But when you do, you get some great shots like this. And somehow they got a cat to look at the lens. 
This one I think is hilarious. And this is what I'm talking about with cat's eyes. They can really draw you in. And when you can get the eyes really wide, that's a pretty incredible look. And another one, good to get close-ups that way too. But you can also get those candid moments. And even if they're not funny moments, sometimes they're just sort of sedate moments like this. Um, here you've got a cat seeing it. Looks, it looks like it's seeing its reflection in the window, but it's kind of a nice little slice of life moment. Here's one that I shot. This was just a, um, a friend's dog swimming in the creek behind their house. And dog's not looking at the camera, but it's still kind of a nice portrait. And of course you can always get these. Pretty easy to find your cats doing things like this. And sometimes then you do get those moments that are priceless. This guy looks like he's saying hi or waving. And there's no reason you can't get close if, uh, unless you're worried it's going to really spook your pet. Uh, go ahead and get close. If you've got a zoom lens on your camera, you can try that. If you're using a smartphone, uh, a lot of the newer smartphones have those zoom lenses too, but uh, closing in and really getting a lot of the pet's face, it does not even have to be the complete head. As you see here, you're really just looking at the cat's eyes almost, but that's a really interesting close up. This was my nephew's dog and I just, he was just, or she, I should say, was just lying on the couch. And I think she'd been running around a lot that day. So she was pretty spent. I didn't do anything here except uh, just crouch down and with my smartphone took that photo. So sometimes it's easy. <laughs> and you can do it with, a lot of different types of pets. I've never owned a parrot, so I'm not sure how they react when you get close. This could have been a zoom lens that somebody used or telephoto. But if you have a horse, you can do that. And even with small pets, And one thing you want to do is try to focus on the eyes. That's where the most interest, that's where you get the emotion. And it, sometimes their eyes just are really amazing colors. And it doesn't just have to be a dog or a cat where you do that. And of course, this is just incredible with this blue color of this cat's eyes. But you can do it with other types of pets and even with fish. <laughs> and you can also get far. That's still a nice, if, if you really have trouble getting close to the animal, just showing them in their environment, even if they're standing or sitting still works. Sometimes the scenery around them is as interesting as the pet, him or herself. I love seeing pets in snow. I don't know what it is, but or dogs in snow. I always like to capture photos when they're out in the snow. Or you get moments like that. <laughs> And that's a sweet one. And 
that's one you don't see every day with cats. I, we see a lot of cats running around in our neighborhood here, but I don't see them in fields like this all that often. And that's one that I shot at the beach. Okay. So I'm going to stop there real quick and just uh, see if there are any thoughts, questions that have come up. You know, Scott, when you made the comment about the squeaky toys with the dogs, um, I, well, before the pandemic, I volunteered with a pet rescue. Yeah. And um, the person, the person who takes our pictures is a, pro she does professional pet photography and she always does this, holds a squeaky toy. I'm trying to figure out where my hand is in the thing, but hand, holds her um, squeaky toy, you yeah. know, right about head level and, and does that to get the dog's attention. And she gets some pretty good shots. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, she has to take multiple because sometimes they aren't very cooperative and look away. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the other thing. It really depends on the dog and, uh, or the cat, uh, whichever you're taking. Some are a little easier to capture their attention and uh, than, than others. I think it helps if you've had the pet for a while and you've really established that bond with them. But uh, some of them are just uh, really uh, a little less attentive than others, and you have to work at it. Yeah. Yeah, neither one of my cats have been very cooperative with pictures yeah and yeah. they're not you know hold the string or hold the shiny object they they, they could care less <laughs> yeah 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 and you know we have not had a cat for about four years i think now or three years and so i forget how hard it is to get them to sit still and pay attention but the cat we did have, the, the last cat we had, Milo, was actually a very pretty cat. And he was also fairly chill, so to speak, and a little bit easier to get pictures of than our other cat that we had, who was uh, kind of cantankerous and didn't want to have anything to do with well, most of with my people. cat and dog pictures are them laying down because they wouldn't cooperate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, some of them come out okay that way too, but you know, you'd like to get one where they're sitting or actually trying to do something, but yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't um, always work. They they, yeah. they rule the roost basically, and they dictate what's going to come out in your picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Michelle, does Louis? Um... Is he food motivated at all? Or? Oh, geez. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he is absolutely food motivated. So maybe too much so, so that that would ruin the shot because he wouldn't. I don't know. I don't think that would. Yeah, it would work. But, you know, frankly, we've just done uh, candidates with him. And yeah. that has worked out. But I'd like a more of a portrait. Yeah. Too. Yeah. And since he's a, you know, height motivate, um, height, uh, a diminutive height, you know, a corgi with those little yeah. short legs. Right. Um, it's hard to get, you'd have to get in a prone position yourself to get his face, I think, or have him up on a couch or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that is the hard part. Are you mainly using your uh, smartphone to take yeah. the pictures? Yeah, yeah, we have other cameras, but I just don't use them. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, there may be a couple of tricks. Um, it, it's still, it, it's so work to, to do that. I find with me anymore, I find that trying to get down at, on the ground to get a sort of straight ahead shot when they're, I, I mean, my knees just don't <laughs> cooperate with that anymore. No. So it's kind of hard, but uh yeah, but sometimes you can put a timer on the camera and maybe hope that that'll catch it if you just set it down and leave it there. But yeah. Okay. All right. Well, the other the other trick that works sometimes is catching them when they're in a place where they are really comfortable, where they feel safe, where they feel relaxed 
you know, you've probably, if you've ever gone through dog training, you've heard that, uh, that rule of thumb that a good dog is a tired dog, or maybe it's the other way around. A tired dog is a good dog. But uh, this little guy is named Barkley. He is another niece's dog. And he is very, this was when he was a puppy and he is one of the tiniest things I've ever seen. And when he was a puppy, he was really tiny. It's uh, he's a Yorkie poo. Um, so it's one of those uh, sort of newer crossbreeds and very friendly, but also very energetic. And finally he conked out and got in this pillow and I just had to grab this shot and um i lucked out on this one because he looked straight into the to the camera for that and you can always if they found a comfortable place like a pillow or a, one of their beds that always works You know, the other thing I, you know, trying to get good shots of pets, the other thing is you have to have your camera right by you all the time. You can't just say, yeah. I'm going to go on a, on a pet, I do a pet photo shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Which is one thing it's nice about having the smartphones with you because you can at least, you know, whip those out and, and you have a little better chance of capturing the shot because it's always, most of the time, right next to you or, or in your pocket or, somewhere on your person uh as opposed to a camera but um, i have far more pictures i've taken of my pets with my smartphone than with my camera because it's just the moments i want to do it that's the only thing i have on me yeah sometimes the backyard is where they're comfortable so that can always be an interesting place to catch them or front yard even sometimes they may rule the roost around the house and so that may be where they're comfortable and that's okay you can get them on top of a table or a shelf or anything like that and even if they're comfortable in a bucket that'll work that'll make for a memorable photo So we were talking about different angles too, and uh, sometimes it's hard to really get in, in an angle at their level. Uh, but if you can try to even sometimes tilt the, the camera a little bit or uh, just kind of innovate a bit, not just go for the straight ahead shot, that can make for an interesting animal photo too. Here's another one with amazing eyes. Sometimes straight from above. I shot this one. It's not the sharpest. I would have rather had the eyes a little more in focus and less of the nose, but or snout, I guess I should say, but, uh, but at least it was a, uh, an interesting angle to take. I, I was looking straight down when I shot that or had the camera pointed straight down. And sometimes you get those different angles when you catch them playing around or sneaking around or anything like that. Here's a fun shot. And this kind of combines both an interesting angle and also the the pet just living their life. This one I really kind of like. So we were talking about getting down to their level and that's not easy all the time. There are certain things you can try. Uh, if your cat's really for example, or your dog just sort of lounging around and you want to get a nice shot of that, but you don't want to be crouching down to try to do it. You can use the timer on your phone camera or on your camera. Most of them do have a timer that delays the actual shot going off for 
anywhere from three to 10 seconds. And uh, then you can just set the camera down and wait for it to, to go off. But that also means the animal hopefully will not be moving around too much and staying in the position where you want to catch them. There's another example. Probably even more difficult outside, but. And you know, it's funny. I do remember somewhere along the line, I got a shot kind of like this of a friend's dog. And I think all I did was take my iPhone and uh, I was sitting in a chair and I just had it, my arm extended down all as far as it could go and shot it that way. And I took several shots just to make sure I got the dog in the frame, but. And it's always great to catch them in action. Uh, these are great candid shots when you can see them running. Uh, these are where you need to be maybe using a fast shutter speed on your camera. If you're using your smartphone to take these, you might want to uh, uh, look and see if your camera does a burst mode so that you can sort of follow along uh, as they're running or leaping or doing whatever they're doing. Uh, and within one of those bursts, all those frames you got in that burst, one of them would turn out really sharp like this. That's... These are hard to do, but, but it's also, it is hard to do technically in terms of getting the animal to, or animals to, cooperate it really doesn't matter because you're catching them just doing what they do even a horse just galloping or kittens playing around <clears throat> and this is where that burst mode comes in uh into play really well too because you have a better chance of actually catching a frame in which the animal is up in the air like this a little bit. So do, is everybody understanding what I mean when I talk about burst mode? Yeah, okay. Okay. There's another one and another dog in the snow. I always love these. Now, this one's interesting too. Now this one, I could never do. I could never get that low and be that patient, but uh, somebody got a pretty interesting shot of a guinea pig. But catching them sleeping is, these are nice too. Sometimes these are really soothing pictures. Really makes them look so innocent and tranquil. And if you can catch them sleeping in interesting places, that's even better. This cat looks like he took over the the bed. We had a dog that slept like that. Yeah. Yeah. My dog does that. Um, you know, I'll be brushing my teeth, getting ready for bed. And I walk in and he's taken up my whole side of the, or she has taken up my whole side of the bed. Mm -hmm. And sometimes she'll be very cooperative when I tell her she has to move other times. No, <laughs> she <laughs> does not want to budge.
So here's one. This is Milo, the cat I mentioned, and this is not a really high resolution photo by any stretch, but it's still kind of interesting. I, I like the way it turned out. Uh, I took this probably eight, nine years ago, um, and I was using a cell phone for it. I, was pro I probably was on an iPhone 4. Those cameras were not as nice as what they're making on the iPhones now. But just getting him in this relaxed position, and I think I did a little bit of editing on the photo afterward to, to uh, create a little bit of a uh, shallower depth of field here. Uh, but kind of like this relaxed pose and Okay, so let's talk about those expressive faces. Uh, and these are hard to capture sometimes too, but when you do, they are priceless. Make for really hilarious or really touching photos. I mean, who can resist a puppy's eyes looking up like that? I guess they call these whale eyes, right? Where you can see a lot of the, the white in their eyes, but... And it's easier, I think, to get dogs doing this head tilt than cats, but this is this is cute. And of course, some animals just look like they're making a facial expression, just the, the breed, right? Um, this guy looks grumpy. Just he's he may be very happy, but he looks grumpy just the way his face is structured. And same with this cat. So sometimes the expressive faces are there for you, but this one is just calling out for somebody to write a caption for it. And this uh, guy looks like he's saying, look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane. And, you know, you see these pictures all the time of horses uh, doing this. And I, I always wondered how people caught that. It is so split second. And I caught a wild horse doing this once. And, and I did not even realize it until I looked at the picture afterward. But it was actually a bunch of wild horses in, uh, this was in Iceland. And the horses there just kind of roam about freely all over the place. And uh, I snapped a picture of a herd of them. And uh, then when I went back to look at what I captured, there was one of them was doing this. I never even caught it. So sometimes even if the horses aren't doing much, maybe using that burst mode is worth it. And this one just looks like, I don't know, coquettish or something like that. <laughs> like a little demure smile there or something. And this looks like a happy smile. So if you want, you can always dress the pet up. And this photographer in particular, she has a lot of photos out there of pets in different outfits. You know, even if all you have is a, a bow from a gift and you want to put on a, on the pet, that's fine too. And I, I honestly don't know how people get dogs to keep a hat on. Uh, I, that photo I had of Maggie wearing her, her uh, get set up hat, she, uh, she didn't want that on very long. Um, but this one's, this one's great. And this looks like they dressed up the dog for Halloween or something. And this may be a birthday party for a dog. So I think these are some of those fun and funny moments that I mentioned. And I think 
um, Michelle was talking about trying to capture. You know, it's luck of the draw a little bit. It's sometimes you're just in the right place at the right time. And if you have your smartphone handy and you want to just pull it out and capture it, you can always do some editing on the phone later just to get out any bugs or do some cropping or something like that. But uh, this was just kind of fun. Slightly cliche, but. But then this one's pretty amusing. And here's our grumpy guy again, but he looks like he's really bent on uh, digging into what's on the table there. That one's cute too. This dog looks like he's trying to be uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi or somebody from uh, Star Wars. <laughs> And again, just be be ready to capture these when they come up. And it's always great to show togetherness. If you've got more than one pet, even if you've got an indoor pet and an outdoor pet like a horse, getting moments like this, this is a really nice, really kind of a portrait, even though they're not staring right at the camera, it's still a nice shot. These shots of big dogs and cat, small cats are, I, I never knew quite where the whole dog chases cat thing came from uh, as opposed to cats chasing mice, but I've seen a lot of cats and dogs get along really well like that. Whoops, I think I missed one. No, I didn't. And there's another one. And these are also examples of just catching them at the right moment, too, where you can get them doing things like this. And you want to get people in there as well when you can and just show the pet pet your pet or somebody else's pet being with the people or person that takes care of them the pictures of kids with a dog or cat are invaluable There's another kid. And that is my wife, G1, with our dog, Maggie. And I caught that one years ago when Maggie was still pretty young, but it's still one of my favorite pictures. I uh, had it framed on my desk in my office when I was still going to an office, and that has become a family classic. And the last thing you need to remember to do, especially with the dogs, is reward them afterward. Uh, they may remember that for next time. So if you want them to sit still for the camera, if they know that there is something in it for them at the end, you might have a little bit of a better, easier time. Okay, so other thoughts or questions? Scott, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I popped in because I've been having microphone issues since Get Set Upset me my microphone, and it only happens when I'm in a, a class of Get Set Up. Oh, okay. I hear you fine. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. Well, 
now we have to test it when if, when I launch the class because that's okay. where the problem has been. But sorry to pop in, everybody. Thank you. I got some fabulous. I enjoyed that so much. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I hope it generated some ideas for people. Yeah. Okay. I do have some other photography, get set up photography related things to tell you about. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to do that. Uh, before I do that, I will just let you know of some places to go to find inspiration. If you're wondering about ways to get good shots of your dog or cat or parakeet or goldfish, whatever. Uh, these are just some sites I go to sometimes when I'm looking for ideas for photos. Uh, not that I want to copy them, but it just gives me, gets the juices flowing in my brain. Uh, Flickr, I don't know if, how many of you are familiar with Flickr. It's been around for a long time and it's changed ownership several times. Uh, it's now owned by Smug Mug, but it's a photo sharing site and it's really uh, popular and it has pros on there, but it has millions of amateurs who are just sharing their photos, getting feedback, and you'll see a lot of interesting pet photos there. 500 pics is kind of the same thing. I think it started out as a photo storage site, but it's morphed into more of a uh, photo sharing. Instagram, of course, that's always a good place to go. And there are there are different types of groups on Instagram. There's, I know there's one, the Dogs of DC in my area that has some great dog photos on there. Then these last two are, they're technically stock photography sites and they're free. Uh, you can take photos from there. Some of the photos I showed today I got from there. Uh, but a lot of, especially on uh, Pexels, I think a lot of people who are not professional photographers, uh, or maybe it's not their big source of income, at least they're posting their photos there. So a lot of pet photographers or people who are just capturing photos of, of animals in their element, um, you'll, you'll find there. So any of these are fun to kind of stroll through when you're not involved, not immersed in any other activity and want to just generate some ideas. So in summary, again, use treats and toys and noises uh, when you can to try to catch your pet's attention. Focus on the eyes. Remember to try to focus on the eyes as much as possible. Shoot where they're comfortable. Uh, try those different angles. If you can, get down to your pet's level or somehow get the camera down to the pet's level and look for expressive faces and seize those fun and funny moments. You know, this is something that is, should be fun and is fun. And so uh, I know sometimes it's a little frustrating when they don't cooperate, but uh, sometimes if the fun and funny moments are there, they don't have to be cooperating. So I just think I'll encourage you if you do end up with some really great photos of your pet you're really excited about and you want to share them, you can always share them on your social media feeds if you have a Facebook account or Instagram. And if you don't mind giving us a shout out, we always appreciate it. Our hashtag is get set up. You can also visit our Facebook page, which is at get set up. And you can also drop a line to Liz on our team. She is always looking for interesting stories about our learners and their experiences with things they've learned on get set up. Uh, to share on our blog and our own social media outreach. And her email is right there, Liz at getsetup.io. Uh, just some related classes in the creativity realm uh, coming out in the next uh, few days. We have one on creative writing. There's a discussion group on people who love to crochet. And there is a music fun hour. And that's more of a social time to just talk about music and listen to music. My next classes, I have one 
uh, this evening at 7 Eastern uh, called The Magic of Photo Apps. And that is a look at the different mobile apps and a couple that are desktop oriented that you can download for free and use to do all kinds of crazy things with the photos you've got sitting on your phone. And uh, you can turn them into paintings. You can actually uh, uh, erase objects and even people or animals from a photo. It's pretty amazing. And then tomorrow morning, I am debuting a class called Make a Photographic Slideshow with Music. And I've been practicing up on that one. So uh, if you'll bear with me tomorrow on that one, we'll walk through creating a, a photographic slideshow if you want to do that. But I want to let you know about the photo challenge of the week. I think Jeannie already knows about this. She was in a class yesterday where I mentioned it. But uh, we this is a new interest group we're starting uh, beginning in May. And we're going to get together every week and share photos with other learners and just talk about them, get feedback, advice. Each week we'll have a different theme. And I'll tell you the first week's theme in a moment. But we'll vote for a winning image, and the top vote getter will receive a Get Set Up prize. And week one will be spring flowers, just to celebrate spring. So if you've got photos that you've taken from your garden or that you have in a bouquet in your house or out in nature, local park, any place, uh, go ahead and send those in. And the place to submit them is this email address, which uh, you'll see on the uh, website when you go to see the information about the class. And this will be Friday, May 7th at four o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern time. And we'll just have some fun. Talk about uh, stories behind some of the shots we took. And I hadn't revealed this, but the week after May 7th, the next photo challenge will be birds. So if you have any photos of birds here, I'm really playing up the spring thing here, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> So I'll be sending you a few class notes uh, just for uh, reminders for you and a couple of different links to other information as well. If you like this class, you can share it uh, by uh, posting it to somebody in Facebook or Facebook Messenger or emailing it to somebody directly. You also will get some other class suggestions here and a link to the full schedule of Get Set Up classes and the feedback form. And the feedback form has a rating system on it, uh, five stars for both the class and the guide. You can uh, lower that, it defaults to four stars, but you can lower or raise that, whatever your sentiments drive you to do. And you also can add comments about what you liked about the class, what you didn't, and what you think might improve it. You also may write in here some ideas you have for other classes. If there's something you're wanting to learn and you don't see us offer a, offering it in class form, let us know because we have generated many, many, many classes based on the ideas that you have provided us in the past. So keep those ideas coming. We also have a new feature on the website. When you register for a class, you can click here. Uh, you'll see it down below. Uh, the information on how many, how many participants and so forth. And this will allow you to tell a friend, hey, why don't you join me for this class? You can do that via Facebook or WhatsApp or just via directly via email. And finally, if you would like to host an interest group on Get Set Up, and we have many interest groups, people get together to talk about a shared hobby or uh, a genre of music or uh, book authors that, that everybody's following. So let us know. You can just email us at help at getsetup.io to let us know that. That's also an email address you can use to suggest a new class. You're not just limited to that feedback form. If you're a member of an organization or you're living in a community where you 
think there might be some partnership possibilities with Get Set Up. We do have a lot of partnerships all over the country where we're providing uh, classes to memberships and organizations. And Michigan is an example in the state of Michigan. We uh, provide classes for free to all adults 60 and over. This is an arrangement we made with the state. And uh, yeah, let us know about that. And also that's the email address that you use to request a recording of the session. Okay, so I hope this was fun. I hope, uh, hope you got a few ideas out of it. I uh, really had a fun time putting this together. It was fun to look at all the animal pictures. Okay. And I uh, hope to see you all at another class soon. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Okay. Take bye -bye. care, everybody. Bye-bye.